Okay, our next session is focused on artificial intelligence safety and cybersecurity. Um, there's tremendous opportunity in artificial intelligence, but there are also risks we need to be aware of. We need to be worried about things that others might do, um, as well as some safety vulnerabilities inside these systems. So what we're going to do for this session is we're going to have two expert presenters each give a brief 10-minute presentation to kind of tee up some of these issues. First, we'll have Dr. Dario Amade from OpenAI, who's a leading researcher on AI safety. He is one of the co-authors of a foundational paper looking at AI safety. And um, after him, we'll have Dr. Kathleen Fisher, who's chair of the computer science department at Tufts University, talking about AI-enabled cybersecurity. And after that, we'll have a moderate discussion with them as well as other panelists. So thank you very much, and welcome, Dr. Amade. Thanks. Got the slides? Uh, so, yeah, at, uh, at OpenAI, which is a, uh, AI, a research lab uh, founded by Elon Musk and others, uh, I think about a combination of uh, uh, both how to make AI systems and how to make AI systems safe, which means making AI systems do what we want them to do. Um, so, in particular, I'm going to be talking about uh, what I think is going to happen with the next generation of AI systems. So, just a couple years ago, even to researchers who were at the core of uh, AI, AI research, the boom in AI mostly meant things like speech models, vision models, translation, natural language processing. These systems can be quite powerful, and if they go wrong, uh, things can be quite bad. But at the same time, there's still an essential passivity to such systems, right? An image, an image classifier classifies an image, and then uh, a human decides what to do with that image. Things can go wrong, um, but there's a limit to how bad it can be. Um, there's a new type of, of uh, AI system uh, based on a technology called reinforcement learning um, that has some properties that make me think that safety is going to be a much bigger issue in the future than it has been in the past. So reinforcement learning is a technology that allows machine learning systems to teach themselves and to operate in a completely autonomous way in complex environments. So here are some examples of such systems. Um, the first one is the, uh, the famous AlphaGo system, which Google's DeepMind unit uh, worked on, which uh, beat the world champion and more recently uh, was able to uh, surpass even its previous system without involving any human knowledge at all. Um, the other three are systems trained at OpenAI. Um, the system below is a reinforcement learning system that has learned to play a uh, massive uh, multiplayer online uh, battle game called uh, Dota that uh, millions of people play and professionals devote their life to. And we managed to beat the world champion in that game with a system where we told it almost nothing about the game except what it meant to win and what it meant to lose. And it was able to experiment with all of its possible strategies and uh, figure out how to beat the world champion, including things like baiting, tricking its opponents. Unlike AlphaGo, th un this isn't a deterministic environment. It's stochastic. There's a lot you don't see. Uh, up at the upper right is uh, two simulated humanoid robots that have learned to sumo wrestle each other in a competition. Um, and at the bottom is uh, deployment of uh, stacking of, of, of blocks by, uh, by a real robot, which we also trained by, 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 by uh, reinforcement learning. Um, so, you know, this is, this is kind of a new kind of AI that I think is, is emerging, particularly from our lab and uh, Google's DeepMind unit, some others as well, um, that I think is going to have a, 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 lot, of, uh, a lot of implications. Um, so, again, the key features of this are extended interaction with a complex real-time environment, a very high level of autonomy, and along with that, the ability to do things at a speed that humans will not be able to keep up with or monitor. And the system teaches itself and discovers its own strategies instead of us telling it what to do. Um, this is, in fact, I think only going to get more extreme. Um, there is currently a boom in AI-optimized hardware. Um, the, the technologies that have been behind the, the AI boom, deep learning, are based on a particular kind of mathematical operation. We are now optimizing chips for that operation. And so this is a graph of uh, how, much, how many operations we've been able to do per watt of power, which is a good unit of cost. Um, and over the, over the last couple of years, this has skyrocketed, and we really see uh, no end in sight. And the better hardware is going to mean that systems are going to be more powerful. We're going to be able to iterate faster on research ideas because we can run experiments faster. And in the end, we're going to be able to build systems that have even more autonomy and that operate in the real world. 
Um, so that all sounds great, uh, but I, I actually have some uh, concerns related to this. So this is an example of another system, a reinforcement learning system like all of the others. Uh, that we trained to do something. So what this thing was supposed to do was we were supposed to train a boat to, uh, to uh, complete a course from start to finish. And the only way to measure whether it had made progress along completing the course was that, you know, in this, this video game, there are these uh, kind of markers laid out. They're those kind of green and blue things. Every time you get one, you... Um, you, uh, you increase your score. And they're kind of laid out mostly linearly along the course. And so we set, we set this thing running. I, I remember set it, setting it running uh, one day, just uh, telling it to teach itself. And uh, I figured that it would uh, learn to complete the course. But what it does instead, this thing that's been looping, is it goes backwards in the course. It finds this uh, isolated lagoon. And it turns out that by spinning around in this isolated lagoon in exactly the right way, it can get more points than it could possibly ever have gotten by, uh, by uh, you know, just uh, completing the race in the most straightforward way. In a sense, there's nothing wrong with this, in the sense that uh, we asked it to find a solution to a mathematical problem. How do you find, get the most points? And uh, this is how it did it. Um, but you know, if, you were, if this was a passenger ferry or something, or you know, a, a cyber physical system, um, you wouldn't want it spinning around, setting itself on fire, crashing into everything. Um, you might say, uh, well, you know, of course there would be human oversight and this kind of thing would never be allowed to happen. But, uh, you know, if a system is training in a massively parallel way, if we deploy it in a massively parallel way as we would for, say, a, a cyber attack system, something like this can happen without us even knowing that it's happening. Uh, where our system has found a way to do the thing we think we want in a way that we really don't want. Uh, another kind of clever example of this is uh, we trained a, this as a simulated robot that we trained to uh, kind of kick a puck and move it towards the red dot. Um, and, uh, you know, we made a complete realistic physics simulation. And uh, one thing it discovered was that it's actually kind of hard to kick the puck all the way to the red dot. So it kicks it most of the way, and then it kind of cheats by nudging the table backwards in order to make the puck hit the table. And, of course, we just gave it the mathematical problem of, like, yep, you get reward for hitting that, that puck um, right, right, uh, right to the dot. And uh, it found the most efficient way to do that, which turns out to be cheating by moving the table, or what we, we would think of as cheating by moving the table. Now, again, if there were someone on, on that table, if that table were valuable, we would not want the system to discover a solution like that. But in the way that we've specified the mathematical problem, uh, this, is a, this is a valid solution. Um, and so it, I, I personally think it is very important that we develop techniques that uh, prevent this kind of thing from happening, that allow us to impart our intentions and our real desires to uh, an AI system to make sure that it does what we want. Now, moving from kind of these systems to uh, the kind of systems that we would have in, in the real world, I mean, these are both kind of uh, simulated environments. But again, as I said, I think these systems are increasingly moving into the real world. Um, so here, here are a couple thought experiments. So some things that you could imagine doing with reinforcement learning systems, systems that uh, teach themselves and that uh, experiment with their own strategies and that can explore a very unrestricted space. Um, you might be able to make a smart hacking agent that makes uh, uh, you might be able to make a smart ha hacking agent that uh, you know is trying to uh, you know attack a particular adversary. We've already seen some of that with the DARPA competition, although it, it didn't use this this kind of AI. I think this kind of AI would make it uh, uh, much more powerful. And you can imagine that a system that you deployed in this way, maybe it figures the best way to disable the adversary is just to make all the code on the internet unreadable. And such a thing would spread very quickly. Um, we wouldn't know that it would happen, or just kind of any number of uh, similar scenarios you can come up with where it, it does something very quickly beyond the speed at which a human can monitor it that formally achieves the objective you've given it, but that uh, you know, uh, really ends up doing something that we would regard as destructive, not just to our adversary, but to us as well, and, and maybe to, uh, to, uh, you know, to, to, to everyone involved. Um, similarly, I think we'll have uh, kind of large-scale systems designed to do social media influence. They're already kind of uh, dumb bots that, uh, that do this, but you know, I think uh, reinforcement learning might uh, someday and maybe someday soon be a, be a pretty good fit for this. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can imagine, let's say you're doing a social media campaign to get, uh, you know, someone to, to buy your product, and it turns out the best way to get them to buy your product is, you know, to make them, make them really angry and, uh, you know, uh, uh, fight each other, and then they do something that, you know, that increases their, their demand for, for whatever your, uh, your, your product is. 
Um, so, you know, there's been, been a lot of talk about the U.S. and China and basically te technological races, uh, even if only economic, uh, uh, between countries, governments, commercial entities, uh, about, uh, uh, you know, in, in a race to develop uh, more powerful AI. And I think, uh, you know, the, the message I want to give is that it's, it's very important that, uh, you know, as, as those races happen, um, we're very mindful of the fact that that can create the perfect storm for safety, safety catastrophes to happen. That if we're racing really hard to do something, and maybe even some of those things are, are, are adversarial, that creates exactly the conditions under which something can happen that not only our adversary doesn't want to happen, but we don't want to happen either.